Praise the Lord. I welcome you today to our worship service. And I pray that it will be a refreshing time for you. A time of real worship and a time of hearing the Lord directly. And as to hear the Lord, the grace to be obedient to the Lord and the faith to receive from the Lord and the fulfillment of the promises of God in your life will be a reality in your life in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this worship service. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you because you have invited us that we'll leave everything and push everything aside and just concentrate on our fellowship with you and in your word at this time. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your word once again will open our eyes of understanding and you refresh our lives as we come to worship you today. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today as you have uh, listened to the Sunday Scripture and you have seen what we are talking about today, it's a glorious privilege as we come in the presence of God to learn that God is a giver. God is a great giver. He's giving us His only begotten Son. Not only that, He's giving us salvation. He's giving us even the privilege and the promise of getting to heaven when eventually we leave this world. As you think about the provision of God, and as you think about the mercy of God, as you think about the care of God, you can tell that He cares for every area of your life. And He cares and He gives everything that we need. In fact, the Word of God says that God has provided and God has given all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And the Lord Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that when I finish, I will come again and receive you to myself. And you know what he said? So that where I am, there you will be also. As children of God, he has given us his nature. Because its nature is the nature of giving, the nature of blessing, and the nature of doing something good and something necessary in our lives. That nature too, as it passes on to us, we also give. In fact, we're told in Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. It's talking about giving there. If you go to verse 7 and you compare what verse 6 and verse 7 says, you will understand it's talking about giving. In verse 6 already we have read, he that soweth. Either you are sowing sparingly or you are sowing bountifully. Now, instead of using that word, sowing again, look at what he says in verse 7 now. He says in verse 7, every man, according as he purposes in his life, so let him give. You see that, instead of repeating the word sow, he using the word give, which means that when he talks about sowing, He's talking about giving, and he says, not grudgingly, of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, a happy giver, hilarious giver, a person that is willing, a willing giver. That's what we are talking about today in our worship service, the full and final reaping after faithful sowing. There is sowing and then there is reaping. The people who sow are the people who reap. And the people who sow sparingly, scantily, they are the people that also reap sparingly or scantily. But those who sow abundantly, those who sow joyfully, those who sow as the Lord has sown into their lives, and they do it and they give in abundance, and abundance will also come into their lives. That's why we're talking about full reaping after sowing, full and final reaping after 
faithful sowing. Now you see those words there, full. That means in this life, we get abundance from the Lord. In this life, we get the great uh, reward of what we have sown, of what we have given. But there's a final reaping as well that says, beyond this world, if we have sown aright, and if we have sown faithfully, if we have sown honestly, if we have sown the right kind of seed for the expansion of the kingdom of God, even finally, even in the future, when we eventually see him face to face, he will reward us. And that reward is the reaping, the final reaping. Once again, the topic we're looking into, into the word of God today, is full and final reaping after faithful sowing. Full and final reaping after faithful sowing. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, the release of riches by and for saved souls. Uh, you see those two words, by, that is the release of riches. The release of riches by saved souls. You are born again. You are saved. You are a child of God. And you have the nature of God. You release riches into the kingdom of God. You sow into the field of harvest. You sow into the kingdom of God. That is by the saved soul. But now for the saved soul, as you release your riches to God, he also releases to you, and he releases abundance into your life. The release of riches by and for saved souls. Point number two is the reaping and reward of steadfast souls. The people who keep on sowing, they are relentless, they are always sowing, and it says they are going to reap, and they are going to have a reward, the reaping and reward of steadfast uh, sowers. Point number three now, the resurrection. You might be surprised. How does the resurrection come in? You don't understand when I read the word to you. Because you see, eventually, the word of God is saying, after we die, then we're buried. And the word of God even looks at that as sowing, that we're sowed in the ground, and then there's going to be a resurrection. We come up again. That's why point number three is the resurrection and the rapture of standing saints, standing saints, those who keep on standing, those who are steadfast, those who are following after the Lord, and then eventually the end comes. Either the end comes in death or the end comes in rapture, we are going to be raised up because we were standing in the Lord. Let's come to point number one. In point number one is the release of riches by saved souls and for saved souls. We're coming back to that Second Corinthians chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 9 of Second Corinthians, verse 6. It says, but this I say, Paul the Apostle is telling us by the Spirit of God, he said, I need to talk to you about this so that your life will be happy. Your life will be blessed. Your life will be rich. Your life will be refreshed. He says, but this I say, are you sorrowful? Are you uh, poor? Don't you, you don't have enough uh, to live by? He says, I'll tell you the secret of coming out of that situation. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. And then he says in verse 7, in verse 7 he says, every man, every believer, every man, every woman, every child of God, everyone that now has been born again is a member of the family of God and he has the nature of God. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. You hear the word of God, you take it to heart, and then there is now a willingness, there's a purpose, there's a desire, there is a plan. What I have heard and the nature of God that has come to me, I must make it a work and functional. That's why it says every man 
as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, so let him sow, so let him offer, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. What's going to be the result as you give? What's going to be the result as you sow? What's going to be the result as you release your riches and you release your, well, your money and you, re you release everything you've got, your wealth, you release to the Lord? What's he going to do? He's going to release to you as well. Look at verse, verse 8. It says in verse 8, And God is able, and God is willing, and God has promised to make all grace abound toward you. That is, when you release your riches like that for the work of the kingdom, for the growth of the kingdom, for the, for the spread of the gospel, it says now God is able and God has promised and God is willing to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency. Think about that. As you release to the Lord, He releases to you abundance. He releases to you sufficiency that now always having all sufficiency in all things, in all things, things material, things personal, things for the family, and things for the need of, of any area of your life, he, he releases all sufficiency in all things that you may abound unto every good work. Actually, this principle had been established from the Old Testament. Because, you see, the people in the Old Testament days, they also had the nature of God. Because the Lord said, I will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed, that you may love the Lord, that you may serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And because of that same nature of God, they also gave. In fact, if you look at uh, Proverbs chapter 3, reading from verse 9, Proverbs chapter 3, reading from verse 9, you will see what the Lord has said. And he commands us. Why did he command us? Because this is the way of blessing. The gift, the giving that we do is the, what is the thing that brings the blessings back into our lives. That's why it says in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. Honor the Lord. When we give, we're honoring the Lord. When we pay our tithes and offering, we're honoring the Lord. When we sow into the kingdom of God, when we sow into the expansion of the work of God, we're honoring the Lord. And it says, honor the Lord with thy substance. Not just with the word of mouth, not, just, not with an empty hand. We honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. It says, give him the first place. Before you spend anything at all, take the part that belongs to God and give to God and honor Him with the first fruits of all thine increase. Look at the result in verse 10. You give to God now and He's going to give back to you. You release your riches to God and He's going to release back to you. It says, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty. The same principle and the same promise that uh, Paul the Apostle emphasized by the Holy Ghost and said, if you give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. If you give bountifully, you will get bountifully. If you give in abundance, you will get back in abundance. Here, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 10 says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That word burst out, what means is that you will be so enriched, you will be so refreshed, and the Lord will so release the blessings of heaven upon your life that your bag, your container and will not be able to contain what you have. It will literally burst out with new wine. Actually, this uh, word of giving and this word of sowing and reaping will find even from the time of the first book of the Bible. That's in Genesis and with Abraham in Genesis uh, chapter 
14. We're reading here from verse 18. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. And you will see what Abraham did. It says in verse 18, And make the king of Salem brought forth branch and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. Before I go away from that verse, when you come to the New Testament, and you think, you think about Christ, you think about a Messiah, you think about the Redeemer, our Savior. It says, he was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. That's Christ. High priest after the order of of Melchizedek. You know what Christ has done? He has given us the bread and the wine. He has given us his body and his blood. He has given us the sacrifice that brings us into the family of God. Like Melchizedek, king of Salem, that's the prince of peace, symbolized there. He brought forth bread and wine and he gave to Abraham because he was the priest of the most high God. Now look at verse 19. In verse 19 it says and he blessed him as the Lord had blessed us. If you read in Luke it says while Jesus beheld them and he blessed them and then he went back to heaven. The same way that Melchizedek blessed Abraham and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Melchizedek brought out something to Abraham and is bringing it out to you and to me that God is the possessor of heaven and earth. And so when we release anything to him, we're releasing to him what actually belongs to him. He owns the earth. He sends the rain, he gives us the harvest, he gives us the strength, he gives us the ability to do whatever we do. And if we are working with our brain, he gave us the brain, he gave us the health to do the work. And because he's the possessor of heaven and earth, look at verse 20 now. In verse 20 it says, And blessed be the most high God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And look at this, look at this. And he Abraham gave him Melchizedek tithes of all. And he gave him tithes of all. That's sowing. And that is giving. That's releasing a tenth of what he had of all unto Melchizedek. And when we give our tithes and offering, we sow into the kingdom of God. We sow for the spread of the gospel. We're literally giving to Christ who had been appointed the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And because of that, multiplied blessings will come upon our lives. As Abraham did, look at Jacob now, in uh, Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28, reading from verse 15. In Genesis chapter 28, reading from verse 15, And behold, I am with thee. This is God. The Almighty promising uh, Jacob, Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places, all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Here is uh, Jacob. And he arched that dreamer, a ladder from earth to heaven, and the angels were going up and down. And now God gave him a promise and said, I am with you. Isn't that what the Lord Jesus Christ has said? I will be with you until the end of the world. He said, I will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. Isn't that the prayer Jesus prayed for all of us, who are his followers, all of us believers? Father, keep them from the evil, that no evil will come upon us. And bring thee again to this land. He says, fear not, Paul, fear not, believer. I have put you here, and nobody will set his hand to hurt you. For I will not leave thee. And that's the promise we have. I will never leave you and never forsake you until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Everything the Lord has said, he will do. He will fulfill his promises in our lives. He will bless us materially. 
He'll bless us spiritually. He'll bless us in every way. Because of that, look at the response of Jacob in verse 20. In verse 20, that's uh, Genesis chapter 28, verse 20. And Jacob vouched a vow. And Jacob made a promise. And Jacob submitted, consecrated himself. And Jacob decided he was going to honor the Lord, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go. That means if he will fulfill his promise, and we know he will fulfill his promise. And then he says, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, verse 21, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. The Lord be my God. And there's something important here. First of all, the Lord must be our God. Before we uh, think of giving this and giving that, because you know, if we don't know the Lord, if we're not children of God, if He is not our Father, if Jesus is not our Savior, I will just give Him money, just give Him money. Money cannot buy salvation. Money cannot buy peace of mind. Money cannot buy the grace of God. First of all, we must have repented of our sins. And then we turn to the Lord and we're born again. We're children of God. And then after that it says, Then shall the Lord be my God. And now verse 22. Verse 22 says, And this stone, which I have said for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give up me, this man had not seen Moses. This man had not read the law of Moses. Moses was not even born at this time. He was not following the law. This is the gospel. How do you say that's the gospel? You know, as you come to the New Testament, it says, for the Old Testament people, the gospel was preached unto them. And it needed to meet with faith and mix with faith in their heart. And here is a part of the release of uh, Jacob unto the Lord. Because he knows, I belong to God. This God shall be my God. Because of that, he says, I will make this pillar God's house even to the Lord. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely... I will certainly, I will definitely, without considering any circumstance of life, I will surely give the test unto thee. We're read in Genesis, and then we're now going to pass through a lot of uh, books of the Bible and come to the last uh, book of the Old Testament. This is Malachi now, and in Malachi chapter, uh, chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 6. Malachi chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 6, says, For I am the Lord, I change not. What's that saying? I'm the Lord that appeared unto Abraham, I change not. I'm the Lord that gave the promise to Jacob, and I change not. I am the Lord, I change not. What I loved of Abraham, and what I loved of Jacob, that they released uh, their giving, and they released their offering, and they released material things unto me. I'm still that God. When my creatures appreciate me, and when my children honor me, I am God, I change not, I take delight in that. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore the sons of Jacob are not consumed. It's not going to tell them something that they didn't follow Abraham the way Abraham followed him. They didn't follow Jacob the way Jacob followed him. And so it says in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, Will a man rob God? Abraham did not rob me. Will a man rob God? Jacob did not rob me. Will a man rob God? All those faithful Israelites did not rob me. Yet he have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. This is the Lord. This is the Lord. 
This is the Lord himself talking to them. And it is the Lord talking to us that he made us, he created us, he gave us life, he gave us strength, and he gave us everything we have. If we don't remember him, if we don't bring an offering to him, he says, we're robbing him. Are we not the children of Abraham by faith? Are we not walking in the steps of Abraham's faith? If we are doing that, then do what Abraham did and let us understand we must not rob God. Look at verse 9. It says in verse 9, he accursed with a curse. And yet, he is a God to break our curse and to take curse away from us. And in robbing God, we attract the curse unto ourselves. I pray today as you turn around and you say, Lord, I was ignorant. I didn't know that. Now I know in a fuller way. Now I know in a definite way I'm not going to rob God anymore. I am going to give to God what belongs to God and great blessing will be upon your life. Say amen there. You are blessed in Jesus' name. It says in verse 9, he accursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. And then in verse 10, he's saying, you can come out of that curse. You can come out of that tribute. Bring ye all the tithes. That's what Abraham did. Bring ye all the tithes. That's what Jacob did before the law. Bring ye all tithes into the storehouse, that there may be, that there may be meat in mine house. It's not talking of bringing it into, into Malachi's house. It's the Lord talking. It's not saying you should give all the tithes to the minister's house, to Malachi's house, to the preacher's house, and to the pastor's house. This is the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to Malachi. It doesn't belong to the minister. It doesn't belong to the preacher. It doesn't belong to the prophet. Whether good prophet or false prophet. If it doesn't belong to the good prophet, how much less the false prophet? Your money does not belong to those who are destroying the work of God. Your money does not belong to the people who are turning upside down the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The tithe is for God, our Creator. The tithe is for the Lord, for Melchizedek, and for Christ our Redeemer and our Savior. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house, in mine house. And put me now here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out, and outpouring is coming in your family. Outpouring is coming in your business. Outpouring is coming upon the work of your hand. From that little that you have, as you give, you are going to increase, you are going to increase, and you are going to prosper in Jesus' name. It says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. It's wonderful in verse 11. As he tells us in verse 11, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will rebuke the destroyer for your sakes. I will rebuke the oppressor for your sakes. I will rebuke all the termites, all the, all the hindrances, hindrances to progress. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Destruction, devastation, and scarcity, and need, and famine is gone away from you in Jesus' name. Neither shall your vine cast a, a fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And he crowns it all in verse 12. As he tells us in verse 12, And all nations shall call you blessed. I call you blessed. Your neighbors will call you blessed. Members of your extended family will call you blessed. They will not understand. They will not know how is it you are increasing. How is it you are prospering. How is it favor is released on you every time. How is it good, good things are released on you every time. 
because you are faithful as Abraham, because you are faithful as Jacob, because you are faithful as the worthies of old, the people that remembered the Lord and they gave everything they've got for the goodness of God, for the gospel of God, and for the progress of the work of God. Because of that, all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. It will come upon your life in Jesus' name. I said it will come upon you in Jesus' name. Actually, we're told in the New Testament, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, we're reading from verse 2. It says, upon the first day of the week, that's a day like this, that's talking about Sunday. That's the day that Jesus rose from the dead. That's the day when Jesus totally accomplished our redemption, our full redemption. It says upon the first day of the week, it's a day devoted to the Lord. It's a day for new covenant believers worshiping the Lord. And it says when you come to worship upon that first day of the week, on Sunday like this, let every one of you see that. Every one of you, every one of you lay by him in stone as God has prospered him. What does that mean? As God has prospered him. It's talking about the law of proportion. Proportion. As God has prospered him. If I have a uh, a hundred naira, for example, as God has prospered me, I bring it tens and then I give to the Lord, and that amounts to only ten naira. But maybe I have one thousand. As God has prospered him, I take one tenth, it's still one tenth, the tithe is still one tenth, whether small or big, it is still as God has prospered him and then I take 100 out of that 1,000 10% as God has prospered him. But I have a million. If I have a million, again, as God has prospered him, he's talking about the proportion. The tenth of that will be a hundred thousand. And so as God has prospered him, he says, let every one of you Every one of you in the church, every one of you in the fellowship, every one of you among the children of God, live by him in stone as God has prospered him. Live by him in stone. If we were in the church, as the offering bag goes around, then you give and you lay by because that belongs to God. I will not touch that. If we are not meeting together like we are now and uh, you are worshipping, uh, you know, at a distance, then you still lay aside, lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. The Lord has given us the challenge. He has given us uh, the, the commandment. And we're going to obey. And as you obey, the blessings of the Lord will never stop in your life. In Jesus' name. Let's come to Second Corinthians chapter 8. Reading from verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. And then in verse 2, it says, in verse 2, Now how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. I want you to look at, you know, the first line, great trial of affliction and then the last one there their liberality even though there might be affliction even though there might be poverty even though there might be need of scarcity yet because we love the lord because at all times at good times at bad times at difficult times at times of famine he blesses us he enriches our lives because of the goodness of God that is there all the time. And he doesn't ever withhold anything from us. The same thing, all times in our life, difficult times, all times in our lives, times of famine, all times in our lives, all times we give liberally unto the Lord. After all, he's saying, as God has prospered you. If you have little, 
The time you have little, you still take a proportion of that. The time you have much, you still take a portion of that. How that? In a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded abounded unto the riches of their liberality and then he tells us in verse 3 in verse 3 he tells us for to their power i bear record ye and beyond their power he says these macedonian believers these children of god they were saved like you are saved now they were born again like you are born again now the same repentance for them the same repentance for us and the same faithfulness were to manifest towards the Lord so that as he talks about them it says for to their power I bear record yea and beyond their power they were willing of themselves of themselves to do what look at verse 4 it says in verse 4 praying us pleading with us begging of us praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. What had happened here is uh, the apostle said, I know your condition. You even need help. I know your condition. You are so poor. I know your condition. You are in a terrible strait of affliction and poverty. Therefore, we'll not get anything from you. They said, no. But we want to give willingly. We want to sacrificially give. And so it said, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. You understand that? What they gave will permit more ministry to the saints, will permit more preaching to the saints, will permit more enlightenment for the saints, will permit the ministers of God, the work of God to prosper, and the gospel to get to them more than ever before. And now in verse 5, it says in verse 5, that and this they did, those Macedonians, those believers, those committed, consecrated believers like we ought to do today. If we are converted, converted believers, if we are committed, committed believers, if we are consecrated, consecrated believers, if we are the people that are so sold to the love of God, and as they did, so are we going to do and this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. They gave their own selves to the Lord, soul, spirit, and body. They gave their self, themselves to the Lord and their, their heart. They gave themselves to their will. They gave themselves to the Lord. Their personality, they gave themselves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. You know what that is saying? He said, they need to only give money. They need to only share their resources. They need to only bring an offering. They need to only pay tithes. They also give them, themselves completely all their skill, all their talent, all their ability. They gave unto the Lord and they gave unto us by the will of God. That's what the Lord expects. That we will so think about the kingdom of God and think about the work of God and think about the gospel and think about evangelization. That we giving material things, we're giving our money, we're giving our mind, we're giving our energy, we're giving our skill, we're giving everything we've got for the propagation and progress of the gospel. Look at, um, you know, what, what they did. Look at what Jesus had said in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 33, Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 33, what these Macedonians did and they first of all gave to the Lord, and they gave themselves completely, and they abandoned themselves unto the Lord. That's exactly what the Lord has said we should do. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. First, give the first place to the Lord. Give your first faith to the Lord. Give your first energy and skill and strength unto the Lord. Think about the Lord first. And think about the kingdom of God first. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You see the two parts of that verse. Part 1, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
That's the sowing. That's the giving. That's abandoning yourself to the Lord. That's giving the first place to the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and now the, the reaping. And all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. You release your riches. You release your resources. You release money. You release your gifts unto the Lord because you are a saved soul. And then the Lord will release to you his own riches in glory and will release to you the blessing and the fulfillment of the promise he has given. That brings us now to point number two. Point number two is reaping the reaping and the reward of steadfast sowers. The people who sow and they are steadfast in sowing the reaping that will come and the reward that will come in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, reading from verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, reading from verse 4, it says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow. Of course, if he does not sow, he will not reap. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. If we are regarding the clouds, if we are regarding the uh, difficulties, the changes in time, if we're regarding you know, all the deprivations and all the difficulties, well, we're not so. If we're regarding you know, all the hindrances, we're not so. He that observeth the wind shall not so. He'll not even come out of his house. It's going to rain today. And it's not going to be easy today. The climate does not allow. So in today, there are people that think like that. They observe the wind. And because they observe the wind and they observe the dangers and the difficulties, because of that, they will not sow. But those who are steadfast, those who are steadfast, and those who are always sowing, you will reap in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6 of that same Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. In the morning so thy seed. And in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whither shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. He's saying, uh, don't regard the wind, don't regard the storm, don't regard the, uh, the difficulties, don't regard the situation in the nation or the situation in the world. Keep on sowing, keep on sowing. Uh, you are going to reap in Jesus' name. I, I look at uh, Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 32. And we're looking at verse 20. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters. It's saying, uh, you know, I've sown here. And in the chances there again, the privilege is there again uh, to rise up and sow beside this water, beside this water, beside that water. And you keep on sowing uh, because you are relentless. Because you are steadfast. Because you are committed. Blessed are ye, ye in particular, you in particular, that sow beside all waters, that sent forth thither the feet of thine ox and the ass. It tells us in Psalm 126. Psalm 126, reading from verse 5. Psalm 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. You see, there are times when it's not convenient. There are times when things are hard. There are times when it's not easy. There are times when you have some personal problems. And all that time, you will not forget to sow. All that time, you will not forget to give. All that time, you will not be so self-centered, looking inward, thinking about yourself. How can I give? How can I do this? Because look at my tears. Even the midst of those tears, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And then in verse 6, we are told now in verse 6, He that goeth forth and weepeth, he that goeth forth and weepeth, Bearing precious seed, precious seed, the seed you have is still precious. The tears will not depreciate and the tears will not uh, lower the, the value of the seed you carry. He that goeth forth and weepeth, 
bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing a sheaves with him. That's what will bring the joy. That's what will turn your tears into laughter. That's what will turn your weeping into rejoicing. Because in the midst of the tears, in the midst of the weeping, in the midst of the difficulties, in the midst of the predicament, in the midst of the confinement, you still keep on giving as you ought to. Are you sick? Keep on giving. Are you sorrowful? Keep on giving. Are you in any difficulty? Keep on giving. Are you oppressed in any way? Keep on giving. Are you persecuted? Keep on giving. Do you have some, uh, some things that bother you? And you say, when will all this be over? Keep on giving. Joy will come at last in Jesus' name. In your life, joy will come. In your family, joy will come. In the ministry, the work of your hand, joy will come in Jesus' name. But you see, he wants us to sow reasonably. And he wants us to sow, not in thinking about money alone, and not thinking about material things alone. Everything we have, he tells us we must sow. Look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 11. Reading from verse 18, the wicked walketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness. Look at that. To him that soweth righteousness. How do I do that? You know the word of righteousness. You know Christ, our righteousness. You know the grace of God that brings righteousness into our lives. And you're sowing that into the hearts of people. People who are wicked, people who are deceitful, people who are sinful. You're sowing the word of righteousness. You're giving the word of righteousness. You're preaching the word of righteousness. To him that sows righteousness shall be a sure reward. You'll be rewarded in Jesus' name. In that same chapter 11 of Proverbs, verse 30, it tells us in verse 30 there, and it says in verse 30 of that Proverbs 11, the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. Already you're saying that word of righteousness, that gospel of righteousness, you are revealing that grace of righteousness, you are witness to the Lord Jesus Christ that he is our savior, he is our righteousness, he is our sanctifier, and because of the word of righteousness and the gospel of righteousness that was sowing into their hearts, they repent, they turn unto the Lord, and it brings forth fruit, and it brings forth the fruit of righteousness. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. Look at this, and he that winneth souls is wise. As we are winning souls, how do we do that? You're giving your time. You're giving the knowledge of righteousness. You're giving the call of Christ unto people. You're sowing into their lives. And because you're sowing into their lives, they are coming to the Lord. And you do each with wisdom. The sowing then is not a limited kind of sowing. Number one, you're sowing the word. Number two, you're sowing your wells. Number three, you're sowing good works. You're doing good works. You're giving good works in the lives of people. Not only that, you're sowing in wisdom. You're sowing in wisdom. He that winneth souls is wise. You're sowing beside all waters. Sowing beside all waters. You've sowed into the lives of that person. You've sowed into the life of this person too. Into the lives of that other person too. And as uh, one of our songs uh, tell us, you're sowing and you're doing it in all kinds of weather. In all kinds of weather. It's cold, keep on sowing. It's hot, keep on sowing. It's rainy season, keep on sowing. It's dry season, keep on sowing. It's a time of confinement, keep on sowing. It's a time when we're free and we can all go out, keep on sowing. In all kinds of weather, we'll win them together. And you're sowing on the web. You're sowing on the web. You know, all that you can do, you're sowing at 
every opportunity and uh, you are sowing by witnessing. He that winneth souls is wise. The Lord will make you wise and the Lord will help you. You will not lose any opportunity. You will keep on sowing in Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 14. Mark chapter 4, verse 14, uh, here is the parable of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he explained the parable, he said, the sower sows the word. So you don't think it's only money. The sower sows the word. The word you have, the knowledge of salvation you have, the knowledge of repentance you have, the word of a life that you have, the sower sows the word. And it tells us in verse 20 what the result of that is. In verse 20, that's Mark chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. You cultivate the ground. You prepare the ground. You take away the thorns in the ground. You, you take away the stones in the ground. You clear the false notions and the false doctrines away from the ground. You are sowing into. And as you sow like that, they that are sown, the seed sown on good ground, so they are such as hear the word and they receive it and they bring forth fruit. Your sowing will bring forth fruit. Your giving will bring forth fruit. It says some thirty fold and some sixty and some and hundred. And I pray this work of the Lord will prosper in your hands, in our hands, in Jesus' name. And your giving will not be limited. You keep on giving, you keep on giving, and understand, it is not the day you sow that you reap immediately. It doesn't happen always like that. You might sow now, it might take a week, it might take a month, might take two months, might take a few months, and then the harvest will come. But keep on sowing, you will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. And look at Luke chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 35. Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 35. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. Is talking to you, your reward shall be great. So beside all waters, your work will be rewarded. And so by witnessing, your work will be rewarded. So the word of God and preach the word of God to every creature that comes across your way. And it says your reward shall be great. And you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and unto the evil. And then you join verse 38 with that. In verse 38 it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. That's the reaping. You give, you sow, you release, and you make sure that you are not empty-handed. The Word of God is there all the time. The goodness of God is there all the time. The grace of God is there all the time. And you're giving, and you're sowing, and you're releasing. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaking together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. That's the watch of Christ. That's the prophecy of Christ. That's the promise of Christ. It will not fail. It will not fail in your life. It will not fail in your family. But you know, you must give. Because if you sow nothing, you reap nothing. If you sow scantily, you reap scantily. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow abundantly, if you sow bountifully, then you reap abundantly and bountifully. And so, you give and you keep on giving. You sow and you keep on sowing. You release your resources into the kingdom of God, into the work of God, to the church of the living God. And it says it will be given to you again. Press down, good measure, shaking together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure as ye meet with thou, it shall be measured to you again. I say amen for you. Amen in your life. In Jesus' name. Everything we give, everything we sow, we're going to reap and the Lord will not forget your labor of love for his kingdom, for the gospel, in the church, 
for believers and even for believers around you in Jesus' name. In First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 16. In First Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 16, it's talking about our sowing the gospel, our preaching the gospel, our giving our time, giving our time to enlighten those who are ignorant, giving our time to preach to the people that need to know so that as we sow that word of grace and that word of the gospel into their lives, then great blessings will come upon them and the reward will be ours. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, what is unto me if I preach not the gospel? Uh, maybe you don't understand that. How can a man say woe unto me if I preach not the gospel? I want you to think of him like a farmer. And the farmer is saying, I have all this seed at home. All I'm doing is I'm eating the seed, I'm eating the seed, and I'm not going to the farm to sow any of the seed. It says, I have a responsibility to feed my family and to feed the nation. If I do it willingly, I'll go to the farm, I will sow. And then necessity is laid upon me. If I don't want to die of hunger, if I don't want my family to die of hunger, if I don't want the nation to die of hunger, I must go and sow. I must give the seed to the ground. But it says, woe is unto me. Hunger will come. Woe is unto me. Famine will come. Woe is unto me. Disease will come. Woe is unto me. Poverty and penury will come to me if I don't go to sow. That's what the apostle is saying. He said, Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. And then in verse 17, in verse 17, he says, For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. If I do this willingly, if I give my tithes willingly, if I offer my money willingly, if I offer my service willingly, if I sow willingly, if I preach willingly, if I witness willingly, if I share the gospel willingly, then I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, is committed into my hand, and I'm going to give account on that final day. And then he says in verse 18, in verse 18, what is my reward then? Very late that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. It's the Lord that will give the reward, and the Lord will reward you, the Lord will reward us, will reward every one of us in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 8. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 8. It says, Now, he that planted, planting, sowing, planting, sowing, the same thing. He that planted, he that soweth, and he that watereth, I one We sow the seed, and then there's another person that is watering. It says, And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor you receive your reward according to your labor, according to what you sow, according to how you sow, according to when you sow, according to how often you keep on sowing, according to how steadfast you are, how relentless you are in sowing. It says, every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. And then in verse 9, it says in verse 9, for we are laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. You understand that? The farmer is a laborer together with God. All he can do is to sow. And then it's God that will bring the seed up and will bring fruit out of that seed, the same thing, all we can do is preach and send the word and send the message into your heart. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry and ye are God's building. In verse 10, Paul the apostle gives his own testimony according to the grace of God which is given unto me. 
as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. In verse 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And then verse 12 tells us, it says, Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, verse 13 uh, says, uh, Every man's uh, work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try, shall test shall examine, shall evaluate every man's work of what sort it is verse 14 now, here comes the reward, if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon he shall receive a reward, you will receive a reward, we shall receive a reward in Jesus' name. What do we do then? Everything we do, do all in the name of the Lord, do it for the honor of God, do it for the glory of God. You're sowing for God's glory, you're giving for God's glory, you're speaking for God's glory, you are interceding for people, that's part of giving, you're doing it for God's glory, and you're doing it for the benefits of the people, benefits of the people. Look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 23, it says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Are you sowing? Do it heartily. Are you giving? Do it heartily. Are you preaching? Do it heartily. Are you praying? Do it heartily. Are you interceding? Do it heartily. Are you helping other people? Do it heartily. Are you encouraging people? Do it heartily. Are you counseling people? Do it heartily. Are you lifting up the fallen? Do it heartily. Everything you do, don't, don't do it half-heartedly. Don't do it absent-mindedly. But with all your heart, with all your strength, was all the joy of giving and the joy of service. Let that be joy in your giving, joy in your sowing. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. And then what will happen? Look at verse 24. In verse 24, knowing that of the Lord, he shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ, knowing, understanding, beyond any shadow of doubt, that of the Lord you will receive the reward. Men may not appreciate, men may blame, and men may look down or belittle, but of the Lord he shall receive the reward. You know, men may not know everything you are given. Men will not know how faithful you are when you give your tithe, how much you are given, when you give your tithe, how secretly you are given. Sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And so you say, how will I receive the reward? Since they don't even know how much I'm given. Don't you know ye shall receive the reward of the Lord, for ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Of the Lord you receive. Even from today, blessings will be flowing in your life. As you release into the kingdom of God, into the work of God, the Lord will release all the abundance of heaven into your life, into your soul, into your spirit. Spiritually, it will bless you. Materially, it will bless you. Give, it shall be given unto you. We're coming now to point number three, and it's the resurrection and the rapture of standing saints, standing saints. I'm reading from First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 37. First Corinthians chapter 15, we're reading from verse 37. Remember, we're talking about sowing and reaping. And Paul, the apostle, by the Spirit of God, he says, the sowing we're talking about is even going to take place at the end, after we've done all our service here. And he says, look at verse 37, and that which thou sowest, Thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. He's still using the illustration of the seed taken by the farmer, and then he goes to sow that on the field, and he says, That which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. 
it may chance of wheat of some other grain. And then in verse 38, it says in verse 38, but God gives it a body. What we have sown, God gives that a body as it has pleased him. And to every seed is own body. To every seed is somebody, to the corn, it's somebody, to the rice, it's somebody, to the legume, it's somebody, and to the maize, the own body, just peculiar to each one. Then verse 39 uh, says, and all flesh is not the same flesh. There is one kind of flesh of men, and another flesh of bees, and another of fishes, and another of birds, in verse 40, and then he goes on to say, and there are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial, heavenly bodies, and earthly bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the heavenly is one, and the glory of the terrestrial, the glory of the earthly is another, in verse 41, then he goes on to say, in verse 41, and there is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star different from another star in glory is building up a something is telling us that eventually as we have sown over here as we have given over here as we have yielded our lives to the service of God and to the service of other people over here eventually when we die eventually when we are buried we are sown and then there is good to be a resurrection and then a glorious body will be given to us and for those of us who will not die before the coming of Christ there will be the rapture and we shall be changed. that's what he's getting at he's telling us that the sowing continues and the sowing continues and when you rise at that time you will rise in glory you'll be like a star in the crown of Christ another person will be like a star but one star will differ from another depending on how glorious your life has been how gracious your life has been how giving you have been and you are giving yourself completely you will shine like a mighty star and then in verse 42 in verse 42 it says so also so also is the resurrection of the dead you see that it's talking about sowing and then it comes to resurrection it's talking about material things and then it comes to the spiritual it's talking about the terrestrial earthly and then it comes to the celestial heavenly so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption what does that mean when the body dies it begins to decay and when it is put in the grave it sees corruption it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption verse 43 says it is sown in dishonor uh, it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power and then in verse 44 it tells us in verse 44 it says it is sown a natural body that is when somebody dies a believer a saint a child of God a member of the church a minister of God when he dies uh, the body is still natural but then uh, when that seed comes up when that body comes up that had been sown a natural body it is raised that's resurrection it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body there is an earthly body there is a weak body there is a dying body and then there is a spiritual body there is an immortal body there is an heavenly body there is a body incorruptible that will not die again and now and now in verse 51 in verse 51 he comes uh, jubilantly and he comes joyfully and he says behold I show you a mystery he says hey, don't only stop at you know sowing the seed material things let's talk about heaven now let me show you a mystery there is a mystery already that you have seen uh, in the world as you sow the seed it's a mystery. Everything will become rotting, and then something will come up that will that will germinate and bring forth a fruit. And it says, "Now I'm going to show you another kind of mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep." 
we shall not all die we shall not all be buried we shall not all become corrupt we shall not all uh, be buried in the grave we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed that's the rapture i pray you'll be ready for that time we shall all be changed in verse 52 it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed and we shall be changed and we shall be changed and then in verse 53 it says when that happens for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality verse 54 it says and so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality they shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory verse 55 says oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory and then in verse 56 it says the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but come to the joyful side verse 57 in verse 57 but thanks be to God thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ because of what we know that resurrection is coming because of what we know we're going to be raised in corruptible because of what we know that the body that is sown in weakness that is sown after death will come back to life there's going to be a great resurrection and because at that, that resurrection or the rapture every good thing you have sown you have got some reward here that appears full Full reward and full reaping, but a final reaping, a final reward because of that. Look at what we're to do now in verse 58. Verse 58, therefore, therefore, because of the resurrection, therefore, because of the rapture, therefore, because everything we sow now, we're going to reap on earth, we're going to reap when we get to glory, therefore, because we're sowing the seed of the gospel, therefore, because we need to sow into the the kingdom of God because we need to sow into the work of God therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast be ye steadfast be steadfast in sowing be steadfast in giving or movable always abounding in the work of the Lord always sowing always giving always preaching always witnessing always interceding always praying always helping people always counseling don't allow one day to go without you sowing don't allow any moment to go without you putting something into the kingdom of God and making the kingdom of God expand and extend and bringing people more and more into the kingdom of God you must be a standing sage and you must be a steadfast sower you must be a, a selfless a sower and a selfless steward you must be a faithful servant of the Lord always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord brother your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Sister, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. On that day of resurrection, on that day of the rapture, we will see one another again. You will praise the Lord that at all times, weeping or rejoicing, at all times, difficult or easy, at all times, in season, out of season, you are sowing, you are sowing, you are sowing. Great will be your reward in Jesus' name. Don't be tired. Don't give up. Don't say, I've done enough. If everybody will do as much as I've done, everything will be all right keep on doing it keep on showing us that good example that you're always sowing and great will be your reward on that final day in jesus name resurrection as well as rapture look at first thessalonians chapter 4 first thessalonians chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 14 first thessalonians chapter 4 we're reading from verse 14 for if we believe thank god i believe 
Are you there? I said, thank God I believe. Uh, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Even them which sleep, which die, and they have been buried, and they have been sown in the earth, will God bring with him. The rise of there will be resurrection. Verse 15, verse 15 says, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, those believers who remain alive at the time of the rapture, they have not died. The Lord says, those of us that remain alive, it says, until the coming, of the Lord shall not proceed, shall not hinder, shall not prevent them which are asleep. In verse 16, it goes on to say, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Resurrection. Resurrection. And after that, with that resurrection, verse 17, now and then we which are alive can I tell you something here Paul said we which are alive why did he say we did he think that he might take uh, might take part in the rapture exactly that because nobody knows the time of the rapture from that time those apostles led by the spirit of God and enlightened by the spirit of God he said it could happen anytime and if the apostle Paul was thinking at that time we which are alive if he thought in some day that the resurrection of the dead and the rapture of the church could happen at that time how much more you and I it is nearer than anybody thought he says then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds were them who are the them those who rise from the dead and we shall not precede them and we shall not prevent them it says we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so and so shall we ever be with the Lord and so shall we ever be with the Lord I pray you'll be there I said, I pray you'll be there. Isn't that what he said? Look at John chapter 14, verse 3. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. John chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 3. John chapter 14, looking at verse 3. It says, so that where I am. It says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. And receive you. It's talking about the church. It's talking about the time of the rapture. The dead will rise. That's resurrection and then the believers the children of God it says and it will receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also when the rapture takes place Christ appears in the air the dead in Christ are raised and then we which are alive were raised up together with them and we will be where he is. Look at John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 24. John chapter 17. Reading from verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. You see that when the resurrection takes place and the dead in Christ, they rise up. It says those who are raised from the dead, they'll go up and they we which are alive will be raised together, will be caught up together, will be changed and transformed in a twinkling of an eye. And it says they will be with me where I am that they may behold my glory. I pray you'll be there. I pray I will be there. I pray all of us shall be there in Jesus' name. If we do what we are supposed to do now, this is the probationary period, and this is the time of sowing, and the time of final reaping will come when the dead in Christ shall rise. And when we shall come for, we shall go for our reward. And part of the reward is we will behold His glory, the glory that the Father had given Him, for thou lovest me me before the foundation of the world. You love me before the foundation of the world. What's to be my attitude now? What's to be your attitude now? In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. Colossians 
chapter 3, reading from verse 1, if ye then be risen with Christ spiritually, now we are risen with Christ. Our lives are transformed. All the old habits are gone. And all the, all the pulling to the ground, pulling downward, everything is gone. And now we have the love of Christ. We are sowing like Christ. We are giving like Christ. We are living our lives in the love of Christ. We are touching the lives of people because we are risen with Christ spiritually. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. And then in verse 2 it says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In verse 3 it says, for, uh, for ye are dead and your life is seed with Christ in God. Verse 4, look at this, it says, when Christ who is our life, when Christ, who is the very source of eternal life for us, when Christ, who is the life of righteousness, when Christ, who is the life of grace, when Christ, who is the life of victory in us, because I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, that when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You'll appear with him in glory and you'll see the glory of the Lord and you'll partake of the glory of God in Jesus' name. In First John chapter 3 verse 1. First John chapter 3 verse 1. We're now the children of God and because we're children of God, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God sons of God, daughters of God, children of God, members of the body of Christ, and followers of Christ, ministers and servants of God. It says, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. In verse 2 it says, in verse 2 it says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And the evidence is there. We have the love of God. We're sons of God. We're sowing like Jesus did. We're sons of God. We're giving like Jesus gave. We're sons of God. We resemble Christ. We resemble the very begotten Son of God. And we're giving of our lives. We're giving of our resources. We're giving everything we've got. We sow and we're going to reap. We give and we're going to receive. And we release and it's going to be released on us. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And then verse 3, And everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Purify himself even as he is pure. Now we have the hope in us that he is coming and we're going to see him when he comes and we purify ourselves from stinginess. He is not stingy. We cannot be stingy. We purify ourselves from selfishness. He is not selfish. We cannot be selfish. We purify ourselves from withholding, withholding the good world to do for the kingdom. He that has this hope purifies himself. No sin, no selfishness, no stinginess. Now we give as he has given. We keep on loving as he also loved. And so we purify ourselves even as he is pure and great will be your reward and great will be our reward here in this world we're going to read and then when eventually we cross over to the other side great will be your reward eternal will be your reward in Jesus name let's rise up and pray to the Lord today and it's going to be a prayer of commitment a prayer of total submission, a prayer of total addiction to the work of God and to the grace and to the ministry of giving into the kingdom of God. Rise up and tell the Lord wherever you are now and say, Lord, I thank you because of this understanding on sowing and reaping. I will sow faithfully. I will sow constantly. 
I will sow the seed that ought to sow in the kingdom of God so that the kingdom of God will expand. The kingdom of God will increase. The kingdom of God will be extended. I will sow my gifts. I will sow the money. I will give the tithe. I will give the offering. I will give everything I have that can be of help to the kingdom of God. I will sow in the church. I will sow to everyone that needs to hear the gospel. Sow the seed of the word. Preach the word of the gospel. And preach the word that will lead everyone to repentance and to righteousness. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. It will be something practical. And it will be something in prompt. I'll be doing it promptly. I'll not be delaying. I'll not be waiting for a convenient time. I will do it in season and do it out of season. I'll be a steadfast giver. I'll be a selfless giver. And I will be a sowing giver. I will be a spiritual giver. And I will give everything good that I have to be of benefit to other people and for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Lord, help me. And I expect and I believe as I give, as I sow, as I pay my tithe, as I give my offering, I believe. According to your promise, you are going to release abundant blessings on me. And as I have more, I give more. And then more will come again. And I will give more again, and more will come again. And Lord, I will not sow into bags with holes. I will sow in your house. I will sow in your work. I will not sow into the ministry of false prophets. I will not sow into the activity of Satan. I will not sow into tradition. I will not sow into the field that is not committed unto the Lord. I will bring the tithes and the offering into your storehouse. That there will be meat in your house. And so that the work of God will be done without hindrance and without any, but not because of shortage of money, we don't have enough. I was so abundantly, I was so richly. And as I do, I know I'm going to reap, I'm going to have my reward, your will. Remember, so beside all waters, so in all kinds of weather, so by witnessing, so the word of life into the lives of other people, so with wisdom, so bountifully, not grudgingly, so happily, cheerfully, willingly, relentlessly, and the Lord will bless you. And on the day of resurrection, what a great reward you are going to have too. And at the rapture, what a great reward you are also going to have. The Lord make the word today that we have heard fruitful, profitable, practical in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you because you have taken us from the time of the beginning, Genesis, even through to the Old New Testament and New Testament. The grace of giving, the glory in giving, the joy in giving, the reward in giving. And we we'll pray, Lord, every one of us will partake of your nature the nature that gives, the nature that gives selflessly, that gives sacrificially, 
the nature that gives happily and the nature that gives cheerfully, the nature that gives steadfastly, and the nature that gives abundantly. And we pray, Lord, as you grant us that nature, naturally, naturally, we'll be giving and giving and giving, and will not rob God at any time of what belongs to God in Jesus' name. And we're asking, Lord, that the reward will come. The repeater will come and great blessings will be upon the lives of all your children in Jesus' name. You have told us we'll serve the Lord and you'll bless our water and you'll bless our bread and you'll take sickness away from the midst of every one of us. I'm asking, O oh Lord, as your people serve you, as they give, as they love, as they preach, as they intercede, as they help other people, as they lift up other people, in everything you have called us to do, as we do faithfully, happily, joyfully, cheerfully. I pray, Lord, the blessing of giving and the blessing of service will be upon every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Keep us sound, keep us healthy, keep us happy, and keep us on our feet, working for you, and be strong enough every time to keep on doing this work, abounding in the work of the Lord, until we see you face to face, and the glory your promise will come upon everyone, will be for every one of us in Jesus' name. Let your hand be upon everyone, your goodness upon everyone, and the joy of fruitfulness for everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Remember, that practical thing the Lord has revealed to us, let it be a fruit in your life, give it will be given unto you. So, and you will reap. Do good in the life of someone every day. And then uh, give to the work of the Lord regularly, scripturally. As you pay your tithes and offering, the Lord bless you.